The story you're about to hear will seem absurd, foolish, or maybe even comical to some, and that's okay. I don't blame you. It was once comical to me, too. But what I am about to tell you is 100% true. It all started for me one late January night on a remote stretch of highway near Midland, Texas. I had been working in the Midland-Odessa area that day and I was driving on my way back home in Amarillo, Texas. It was dark, near midnight, or maybe a little after. I was alone in the desert. That was fine. I would often find myself driving alone at night. I was not sleepy, nervous, or jittery. It was just a normal drive. That's when I saw it. Suddenly, a strange object appeared in the sky just above and in front of me. It was close really close, maybe 150 feet in the air and just a little in front of me. I immediately knew that I was seeing something that I had never seen before and that I could not explain. It was long and narrow. I estimated it to have been about 35 feet long. It had yellow porthole style lights all the way across. It had no wings or propellers. It moved silently. I never heard a motor or a sound of any kind. It flew across the road in front of me. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, it disappeared. Just like that, it was over. I knew this was no airplane, helicopter, drone, shooting star, or meteoroid. This was an unidentified flying object I had just seen up close. It was a UFO sighting that I later learned would be designated as a close encounter of the first kind on the high neck scale. What was it? Where did it come from? Who was the pilot? In the following months and years, I wanted answers. So I began looking into the UFO phenomena, absorbing books, news reports, interviews, and government documents even going on to interview other eyewitnesses myself. I learned that my experience was not rare. Every year there are over 3,000 sightings of UFOs in the USA alone. A 1991 Roper poll claimed that 20 million Americans have had a UFO sighting, and astoundingly, up to 4 million Americans claim to have been abducted by aliens. I read about individuals who had been abducted by aliens. I watched interviews of people relating the absolute horror of the abduction phenomena. I could hear the fear in their voices as they told about suffering physical, psychological, and even sexual abuse at the hands of their alien captors. I heard them tell how they begged the aliens to stop, but to no avail. I came to the conclusion that whatever these creatures were, they don't come in peace. On one occasion, I had an opportunity to hear a speaker on this topic. As he told of alien abductions and cruelty, his speech began to differ from other accounts I had heard. He told of a man in Kansas who, during an alien abduction, had cried out, Lord Jesus, help me! And he was immediately released by his abductors and returned to his home and bed. This was documented in the Kansas newspapers. That meant that there was a documented case of someone ending the horror of an alien abduction in progress by calling on the name of Jesus. It was incredible. I began studying the Bible for truth concerning UFOs and aliens. I read Ezekiel chapter 1, especially verses 14 through 16, where the prophet saw spiritual creatures flying in, quote, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Was that a flying saucer? Could that explain how they appeared and disappeared suddenly? Were they coming 
not from a different planet, but from a different dimension, from the spiritual world. I read Zechariah chapter 5 and verse 4 about flying objects that would, quote, enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it. Was that why I so often heard of aliens coming into people's houses and abducting them from their own beds? From my study of both the phenomena and the Bible, I am sure that it is. Jesus described the fall of Satan in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I have become convinced that Satan and his devils often called demons, are the culprits of these cruel and vile acts. The Bible tells us, quote, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Mankind faces a spiritual enemy. We looked already at Zechariah chapter 5 where this evil enters into the house of thieves and liars. The problem is that according to the Bible, all of mankind are liars. Romans 3 and verse 8 says, Let God be true, but every man a liar. And if you have ever taken something that didn't belong to you, no matter how small, you are a thief. According to the Bible, all men and women are wicked sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23 says. And there is none righteous, no not one, Romans 3 verse 10. The good news is that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, according to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. You see, we are all sinners under the power of Satan. But Jesus came to this earth to set us free. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died on the cross, was buried, and rose from the dead to pay the price for your sin. He conquered death, hell, and the grave to set you free. Over time, I have learned that there have been thousands of documented cases of individuals ending alien abductions by calling on the name of Jesus Christ for help. It has even been reported that the only group of people in the USA that has never been abducted by aliens is Bible-believing Christians. Why is that? Because the Christian has the Lord Jesus Christ living inside of him. The Bible says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Jesus Christ is greater than all Satan's minions. The Bible also says, We know whosoever is born of God, that wicked one toucheth him not. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18. Friend, if you have been a victim of the aliens in some way, I have good news for you. There is hope and deliverance in Jesus Christ. He is greater and more powerful than the aliens or any satanic power. If you are not a victim, I'm glad, but I must warn you that your situation remains the same. You are still bound by sin, headed for an eternity in hell, but Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again to save you. The Bible says, if you will put your faith in what Jesus did, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.